Okay, let's get this knocked out of the way. We've already talked about the personal communication, so we'll just talk about the radio communication part of it, okay? You still have to be able to effectively communicate over the radio. It does make it a little bit harder to do. Uh, you have a few components of the sort of the radio system. Okay, you have the base station. I think there's a picture. Yeah, there's a base station here, which means that it's at a base. So if this was our base, and we had a gazillion ambulances parked out, we'd have a big tower on top, and uh, we'd communicate from here with all the other ambulances. Okay, it's at, at our base, base of operation. It has a higher output. One, it has a higher antenna to it, right? The antenna, like where I used to work, the antenna is on top of the hospital, eight stories high. It's almost 100 feet in the air, okay? So it can really stretch out there, and uh, we can talk all over the county at, in some points to it, okay? So it's a lot more powerful. If you look at the wattage here and look at the wattage of a, of a handheld, then you'll see the difference. It's 80 to 150. I think a handheld is like one, 150, but it's a base station. means it's at your base. That base could be the communication center. There's a nationwide shortage on EMS uh, emergency dispatchers, too. By the way, that would be another job opportunity for you guys. They want to be EMTs. Huh? So be a emergency medical dispatcher. But anyhow, so uh, it starts here, the call taker. So the, the dispatcher will take the information to the call and then relay it uh, out to you. You have the radio in your ambulance, okay, which is at a lower wattage. Okay, so it's, it's not as powerful as the base station, but the, uh, the base station gives this, this certain range. And this range depends on the, the lay of the land. If you are in like some parts of where I work, used to work, I mean, it's, it's low, it's covered by trees, and it's sort of at a lower place where the, the radio signals, they don't really get in there. There's cell phone signals, dead places for cell phones. You know, so uh, the radio communication is essentially line of sight. So if you're behind a big building or something like that, or a real low ravine or something of that nature, you're not going to pick up radio communication, depending on the on on where you're at. All right. So you see the sort of the radio system in the ambulance. This would be something that uh, you won't be able to write up front because uh, they just don't allow that. But do, when you go in your ride out, ambulance ride out, look at the radio systems, have the EMS guys show you the radios and how they work, right? And uh, some work really good, some don't work very good at all. Just like anything, it's the amount of money that you actually put into it, right? So if you buy good equipment, you're gonna get good results out. You get what you pay for, and even in communication. But you want to stay in contact always with dispatch. Some of them use a radio where they have their own frequency, and it's mounted in here. There's other, uh, not necessarily EMS, where they run emergency calls, but transfer services. Sometimes they use cell phones or that push to talk uh, technology out there with, with cell phones. Most everybody around uses some sort of radio communication as well. And then you'll be communicating with the medical director and in the hospital. Always keep in mind that this is a recorded channel and dispatch is a recorded channel. Okay, keep that in mind that you're, you're speaking on a recorded channel. And also when you are speaking to dispatch, they're going to end their conversations always with the time military time. So they would end this at 1435. So at the end of their transmission, they're going to say at 1430, like a road number, and they end it with the time, you know, especially a four-digit time. They're like, is that the county road he's talking about? Or is that the, you know, what is he talking about? But this will be an alternate frequency here talking directly to the hospital. If you call into, it's recorded as well. So you, 
Just keep that in the back of your mind. It always kind of recorded lines. Uh, the portable radio, this, uh, has a lot less power to it, right? And it's, it is very uh, susceptible to low spots and, I mean, it's line of sight. So the further you get away from your amulet, and we'll talk about that repeater system in just a second, the less likely you're going to be able to communicate with a handheld portable radio unless they've invested a lot of money into it. If they invested a lot of money into it, then they could have the technology where these things could really reach out and talk a, a long ways. In a helicopter, they invest a lot of money into the <coughs> communications, so they can really reach out and, and talk a, a, a good distance. But most, all of them are used a repeater system, okay? and this is the repeater system that it has. You know, yeah, they're just lower, lower in power. So what happens is you have your radio in the ambulance, okay, and you key the mic up. When you key your mic up, you want to wait like two Mississippis at least. A lot of times when it hits the repeater, it will make a little noise, like a beeping noise. So you push the key in, the, the microphone in, and you wait until it goes beep or whatever it does, right? And because the beep tells you that you've hit the repeater, if you key the mic up and instantly stop, start talking, the dispatchers call it a short key. It means that you started talking right when you keyed the mic up. You have to wait until it hits the repeater because they miss a lot of the communication. They miss the first few words because they're waiting for the repeater to kick on. You, you see what I'm saying? All right. So they have the ambulance here, and then it's transmitted to the ambulance, and then it's repeated, hence repeater, to the base station, and then it may be repeated again through another tower to like the portable. So if you're on a portable and you're trying to reach the base station, you key up the portable radio, wait till it hits the repeater, makes the noise, then start speaking, and then it hits the repeater, and it may hit, have to hit two or three repeaters. Okay. Uh, they have different technologies where it's digital and it's on a like a phone phone line and and all these different radio systems, but the uh, the majority of those are real expensive. So on the EMS side, they're not going to spend the money for that. Okay, when when you can talk around the world on your phone, I mean you can call India from your phone, and it sounds like you're in the next room. Okay. Uh, these, not not so much. Okay, you, there's, it, it's a it's a struggle. Everybody struggles. Every ambulance service struggles with communication. Okay. So, do you see the way the repeater system works? I mean, it's it's just repeating the system. So it's like me coming over here, and I'm telling you something, and you turn around and tell her the same thing, and blah blah blah. You're just repeating it until it gets to the source that you want uh, where you want the information to go uh, police cars I know for sure some of them have repeaters on the top of their police cars so if they're out and they're doing something and they're on their portable it goes from their portable to their car and their car to the re other repeater some ambulances have those as well they the signal only has to go back to the ambulance and the ambulance repeats it to this tower and then from that tower it may go to another tower. Okay. Uh, like in Hunt County, our dispatch center is in Flower Mound. So when we key up the radio in Greenville, that information goes to Flower Mound. That's where the dispatcher is. Okay, so it's a, it's a long ways. Uh, on the helicopter, they do that, and it does it di different. It's a digital system, but it goes to Missouri. Okay, the dispatch center is in Missouri. So when you key it up, you're you're speaking to someone in Missouri. So that's 
these are just the different, but they use the same thing. They use a repeater type, a digital type system. Okay. Okay. Uh, they do get crowded. You see bleeding over and everything else. Okay. Uh, look at the. Just look at the radio system. Listen to the guys in the ambulance talk on the radio. I mean, that's the best way to sort of figure out what's taking place. <coughs> the other things you have are these mobile data terminals. They, they all have different names, but uh, the ones that we had, we had a computer that sit here. It, it wasn't like this, but what would happen is that we would get a 911 call, and they would dispatch us, and all the dispatch information would come to this terminal that was actually on the like it said, looks here on the uh, passenger side. The only problem with this is in our ambulances, this was sorted in the way. So if you were ever in a, an accident, this is like, would impale you. It was really not in the right position because you would hit that, you know. So you'd end up hurting yourself quite a bit on, on this device. But anyway, uh, the dispatch information comes through here and also a map. So let's say uh, we're in all the ambulances have these now, it's just a standard. So let's say we had a call from our base center here to what's close? I don't even know what's close here. The, sh the shooting range down here off Lawson. We had Bubba shoot himself in the foot. Okay. The, the dispatch information would be sent through, the dispatcher would type it up and send it through the terminal that's in the ambulance. And once you got there, the map, the GPS map would be already up. And then you could just follow the map. Turn by turn instructions. Again, the more money you put in it, the better the GPS. It reloads, it needs to reload about every three seconds because <laughs> you're going rather fast. And so the, uh, you have to be careful with GPS, right? You guys know that, but it takes you places you don't want to go. That, that's not new technology. It's just expensive, so not everybody has it, okay, where we have the maps. Of course, cell phones, right? Uh, on an ambulance, you try to have at least two or three forms of communication so you can reach dispatch. Uh, when all else fails, pick up your cell phone and call them, right? That's probably the best way to do that. You just call, call the dispatcher on the phone if you can't get through on the radio. Some, like I said, some EMS uh, agencies, they, they use the cell phone. That's how they communicate. Uh, through text message, too. If they didn't have this system here, I've, I've worked with some pl uh, places that would send your dispatch information to your phone through the text message. So you get a text and you go, okay, I have to go there. It's pretty reliable. Up in Commerce, where well, I worked a lot, if we went in Walmart, we lost all communication. So, uh, except our phone. Our phone still worked in Walmart. Radio communications were gone. Because we were so far away <laughs> from the repeater. Okay, so we, there, there's some issues that you have to overcome. Even with cell phones, there's dead spaces, right? And so you, you run out of signal. I've been in a lot of those where you had absolutely no communication. You know, you see the, 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 the scene in the movie where the guy's walking up the hill trying to get cell, uh, cell phone signal. I've done that, walked up the hill trying to get cell phone signal to call for a helicopter, right? Because we had no no communications whatsoever. Anyhow, uh, most cell phones uh, work out pretty good. Just depending on the coverage, and it's it's very common <coughs> for them to talk. Police use them now all the time. You're, you're driving down the road and you you see a bunch of the police on the phone a lot. They use that cell phone communication, text message. Why not? It's just a good form of communication. The other thing is, see if they have a picture, no? Uh, the telemetry, 
So you're in the back of the ambulance, someone's having a heart attack, right? And uh, you need to transmit them an EKG. And so they can do this now. They plug a, it looks like a phone cord. They plug it in the back of They plug it in the back of the monitor and they transmit the uh, 12 lead EKG to the hospital. So someone having a STEMI, they're going to want to see that. They want to see that before you get there so they transmit it to the hospital. So all kinds of communication technologies. With, with that EKG comes vital signs and everything else. You just transmit it ahead of time. And like I said, it, it really plays uh, if, if you're high in technology, then you have satellite, different, you know, you have a sat phone or a radio that actually hits on a satellite so you don't run into the problem. You guys have been down on this road, Boston, right? Down on that way? You know when it goes way down in that little valley little thing? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, you can very easily lose radio signal there. Probably not cell phone because it's controlled from big brother up above, right? But radio signal, you could probably lose that uh, radio signal there, depending on your communication system. And then again, it's all covered by the FCC. They're going to regulate, so you can't go and say bad things on the radio. The FCC will be looking for you, potentially, right? Uh, they control that frequency. They, won't, they may not look exactly for you, but the service that you're working for, they will look at them, so, uh, depending on. And, and they control the power. So if you're over-modulating and you're overpowering another frequency, they control all this through the FCC. And they do the same as anything, any piece of equipment routine clean, cleaning, maintenance, upgrades, right? Time to upgrade that phone. Uh, my iOS system stopped letting me use my banking app because it would, my phone wouldn't update, you know, due to storage problems. So I fixed that and finally got it with, with load, right? So just usual maintenance, even with radios. That's nothing that you guys will have to do one thing that you will make sure that it's charged and uh, that you keep some backup batteries with you. We, I think we used to carry like three. So you, you communicate directly with dispatch, uh, medical direction sometimes. If it's separate from where you're going, then you might call them on the phone. One thing about getting medical direction is like you're getting a medical control order, so the doctor's telling you to give a certain medication, you'll want to repeat that back to them. So if they're giving you an order for, let's say, one nitro sublingual, you say, okay, doc, I've got one nitro sublingual, uh, you know, blah, 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 what, what is, you know, this is Dr. Smith, and confirm who it is, uh, repeat the order and confirm who's giving you that order because it's recorded. So if Dr. Smith comes back and says, I never said that, then you break out the recording and you play back the recording. Works, work, works both ways. All right. And then, of course, the receiving facility. Don't worry about this. This is just this all this, this way to communicate on the system, okay? Uh, this is what we're talking about, making sure that you uh, wait one or two Mississippis before that. You, you can speak <coughs> just regular English in. Everybody gets all crazy on radios when they start talking on the radio. They think they have to be so formal on it. Just speak regular English, just go precise. Not too many people use codes anymore. I mean, there are some codes. Uh, Trying to remember, we well, ones you really want to remember that are pretty universal is code A, like an alpha. That means everything's okay. Code B means everything's bad. 
you hit code B on the radio, and then all of a sudden you have just uh, called every police officer, supervisor in the area that's coming to, to be with you once you hit code B on the radio. So take that very seriously, okay? Is there a way to like, if you accidentally press it, is there a way to like? It's not a press, you say it on the oh. radio. You key the mic, code, code B. They know where you are. Like you give them your identifier, like if you're medic one, you key up medic one, code B. You drop the mic, right? Then everybody's coming to you. Uh, we had, some people use king codes, like king four, king six, these, not too many people do that anymore. They just do it so the people around them on scanners not sure what they're talking about. So uh, different things like that. Not too much. Just make sure that you know you're not talking to the group like this, right? <laughs> and you had an officer to listen to your mouth. And that you're not saying a lot of words all at once. Because when you key it, when you key the microphone, you hit the repeater. If you hold that microphone button down and without releasing it and then pushing it back, you're going to burn the repeater up. Okay? So you've got to release. Say, say a few things, release it, come back, say, say what you want. Not too many people say over and Roger and all that stuff. That's TV. You just say what you have to say and then, you know, you'll know that dispatch is finished uh, with you because they're going to say a time after. So dispatch will be talking and they'll say uh, 1455. At 1455. You know that they're finished when they give you the time. And definitely avoid slang and, and different things. Remember, uh, on some frequencies, people are listening to you. I've been in people's house where I walked in and they had a scanner on. So whatever I was saying over the radio, they were listening to. Okay, so wait, yeah. Wait, is that a violation of that? No, you can scan. There's an app that you can get for different frequencies. Play it off your phone. Yeah, I'll see if I can find it. You do want to <coughs> speak clearly, okay, so they can understand what you're saying. Like if you're saying it. Uh, a bunch of numbers. You don't want to run them all together. Like if the address is 1345, 1345, highway, whatever. So 1345, what? So your, your words run together. So your numbers you want to say independently, okay? And then this is where we're saying repeat, <coughs> echo, just repeat those, okay? And most of the time you're going to have the information on your device your computer, your phone, so addresses and everything. So there's just a few rules of what to do. I mean, some people use affirmative or negative, right? I don't know. I, I say yes or no. No, that's not, not what we're doing, right? This, it, it just depends on what system, who's in charge and what they want, how they want you to address on the radio. One thing that you want to avoid is, I get it all the time. We're on scene at this time. They put at that time on there, you're, you're here when you go do your ambulance ride out. We're on scene at this time, or transporting at this time, or whatever. They said at this time. Well, what other time would it be? Right? It's just another phrase that you can you can leave out. So. One thing that you do is you say, when you get your 911 call, you say, I'm en route, we're on scene, <coughs> we're with the patient, we're transporting, we're at the facility, we're available, and we're clear. So you're just sort of telling them what you're doing as, as you're doing it, okay? Some systems, like with the computer uh, modules that they have, they you don't have to necessarily call in on, on the, it looks like a big cell phone, you just hit a button. Like when you're on scene, you just, you can reach over there and just push a button and it, uh, 
It marks the time that you're there. But with patience, you just push the button. The problem is that, that everybody else around you can't hear what you're doing. It creates a little, little bit of a problem. Okay? The same thing when you're calling the, uh, the medical facilities. You may have a, a format that you want to use. Uh, that's up to whoever you work for. Uh, they want to know who you are, your EPA, what do you have, okay, and what have you done. And that's pretty much it. Be precise on the radio because you never know who's trying to get, get through. I've had a bunch of really talkers on the radio. They're just talking back and forth. They won't, can't break through, you know, and I need to do something really important and I can't get through. Uh, either to dispatch or to the, to the facility. They're bringing in somebody with a stubbed toe and they're giving them this big, long, unnecessary report. I'm bringing in a CPR from across the street. Who needs to know <laughs> more, you know? But at that time, you just, you're just, if you can't get through, you just pick up the phone and call them. Say, hey, I'm across the street. Cardiac arrest, 30-second EPA, you know, can't get through on the radio, those, those types of things. And again, we already talked about dispatch, remember you're recorded, you need to be precise because they're busy, right? They're taking other 911 calls, they don't have time to hold conversation with you, so be precise with, with what you're saying. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions? Oh, we already talked about that. Uh, one thing, if you're going to be delayed for some reason, you need to communicate that with dispatch. Everything is, remember we talked about it uh, a few classes ago, everything is time. So uh, you need to make sure that they're aware. In, in plus now they follow you with GPS anyway. But they have a big map in most of the dispatch centers and they can see every ambulance. Uh, that dispatch information, that GPS information, also records your speed. So when we talk about driving and towards the end, it records your speed. It records the, 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 the angle that you turn. Like if you make this wild turn, it sends a report to dispatch. They can tell all that. In fact, uh, the system where I'm from, if you went more than 10 miles per hour over the posted speed limit, which with lights and sirens, you were allowed to, if you were going 20 miles over the posted speed limit, an email would, uh, was automatically generated to the supervisor saying that you were traveling too fast. One time it was the supervisor. He was going like 90. <coughs> and he got his, the email saying that his vehicle was going 90 miles per hour but uh, we'll speak about that driving a little bit later talked about that already that that just look in, when you're giving your patient report and you probably won't do this uh, I let some of my students do it on BLS patients they give the report to the hospital, they get to the hospital, they have to give the report to the nurse. So when you come in, you guys have all seen that, been in the ER, where the EMS guys come in, they give a report to the nurse. I make the student do that if it's a patient life support patient. So that'd be good. But you keep it precise, age, gender of the patient, chief complaint, brief history maybe, Brief, pertinent past medical history, always the mental status, always get the vital sign, what, <coughs> what the exam, pertinent stuff that the exam has come up with, what you've done, if any response <coughs> to it, how they are now, if you need medical direction, and then how long are you, is it going to be when you get there. Depending on the size of hospital that you're going to, if you're going to Parkland, they want to know, they only want to know uh, ETA and if you have a cardiac arrest. 
That's all they want to know. Otherwise, like, who cares? We know you're coming here. They just want to know if they're doing CPR. Or possibly, you know, like, if you have a major trauma. Okay? And then there's other acronyms just to organize uh, the thought process a little bit. I just use this. You just get used to it. You just use, you just say what's on your mind. Just be precise about it. Okay. Same way we talked about being precise with when you're giving the, your handoff report to the the doctor, the nurse, uh, especially if you have a critical patient, right? And then the, the, the same, when you're transferring the patient over, you get essentially the same abbreviated, maybe a little bit more report as, as when you hand them off to the, to the facility, okay? So for that, the radio code depends on who you, who you work with. Any questions there about the radio community?